Morning guys, welcome to the channel. So today, as you can see right now this morning, I'm kind of in the middle of a like reorganizing or restructuring little setup right now. Um, when I kind of, this is kind of like a little behind the scenes of a small YouTube channel, right? I mean, this is all the stuff that you don't see. I'm trying to get everything ready for a couple of projects. Um, obviously I'm, I want to do a little reorganizing, a little cleanup here in the garage. Um, so I'm going to kind of run with two cameras. I got the one up here in the corner and I got the one right here. Um, what I want to do, so like I said, it's kind of like a behind the scenes stuff that you don't see. I'm trying to make some room in here, trying to clean up from, you know, the past few projects, past other things, little things going on here. Um, so I've got to get, I want to bring, make some room to bring in, hopefully bring in the D100. I want to work on the door latches. Got some, I want to see if I can straighten them out. I got a little, you know, some latching issues. They don't close quite as nice as I'd like them to. So I'm going to hopefully work on that. Um, I got to get the charger. I did some work to the charger last weekend and I have to replace the, uh, some of the underneath, some of the, the shields underneath the, the charger. So I got new ones to replace these. Um, yeah, just move out of the way for now. I think my plan is, whoops, is to, I think my plan is to bring the D100 in here, get it in here so I can work on the doors and then just flip the charger around in the driveway and pull it up so I can work on that also. Um, hopefully I can do All right, so D100's inside, charger's lined up outside. Actually gotta do some work to the wife's car. So got a bunch of little projects going on today. But the first one I wanna handle are the doors on the D100. The passenger door actually is, is really good. I mean, here you can see, I mean, the gaps, there's really nothing wrong with any of the gaps. It's not so much the door alignment that I'm worried about, but it's just the functioning of the door. So this one actually isn't bad. You know, there's, if I try to, you know, shimmy the door, I think the bushings are okay. If I grab the door and I try to jiggle it, there's really no, no motion in that door and it closes pretty decent. I mean, that wasn't a whole lot of force. It's fully closed. That's okay. Like it could maybe be a little bit better. I mean, I did replace the door seals so that I think could have something to do with it. It's just a little extra pressure on the door, but overall the passenger side door closes really nice. Not a whole lot of force, but we come around to the driver's side door and the driver's side door, different story. Again, if I mess with the door, there's not, a, not any real wiggle in the bushings. So I think the bushings are okay. Again, the alignment looks really good. However, it doesn't, you have to kind of give it some force to get that door to close. And I'm not, it can be better. So that's gonna be the first thing I wanna tackle. I wanna tackle these doors. If you look at the overall alignment of the door, it actually looks really good. The gaps, it might be a little tight here, but I don't think that's so much the alignment. But again, coming down to 75, guys, the gaps are not gonna be super tight might be a little bit of adjustment on the bottom. It might be, it might be able to come forward a little bit. Um, but overall, it, it, the gaps are decent enough. I think it's just the latching. So I'm gonna work on that. I wanna get that, see if I can get that latch dialed in. So that may have gone a little bit easier than I thought. Um, I think I got it. It's not perfect still, but it's still pretty solid closing there. It doesn't take a whole lot of extra pressure. It's definitely less than what it was. Um, let me show you what I did. It was actually pretty simple. I was, like I said, the door alignment I think was fine. So there's no messing with the door hinges at all. Um, I looked at the actual catch on the door itself. There was a little bit of wiggle room in there. Um, not a whole lot. So I tried maybe messing with that. That didn't really seem to do anything. Honestly, it was just the catch. So hopefully this will show up okay. Hopefully the light is good. But you can see it's just a, a hex, not a hex, a uh, Torx bit. And you can see the old paint line here, hopefully. So you can see, I just adjusted it basically up and back just a little bit. It did take some trial and error, you know, move it, try it, move it, try it. But right here is where it seemed to end up really well. 
Um, I tried to put a piece of, I didn't have any pecs, but I had some uh, poly uh, sprinkler line that I tried to maybe put over this to see if maybe that would help, but that didn't do anything. It was really just in the adjustment of the catch. Yeah, and now this door definitely closes a lot better than what it did before. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, got some other things I want to do to the D100, but I think what I'm going to try to do now is replace the, uh, the little skid plates, little plastic engine protector and front bumper underneath pieces on the charger. So yeah, so 5,000 miles ago, I did the 100,000 mile service on the charger. That was a dark screen. Um, and I found that the engine skid plate was pretty beat up. Um, so was the, the front piece that goes like under the front bumper. That is, that was pretty bad too. So I went ahead and ordered that piece, ordered the new engine skid plate. So I'm gonna yank the old one of that piece off first and then get these uh, reinstalled. So it was just a matter of getting all these little screws out, these little body screws, go up through the lower bumper. And uh, man, this bumper is shot. I never, I never really noticed all the old rock chips in here that were filled in. I've had this car since 2019. And there are a lot of chips here that are filled in with cover up paint. And I'm seeing paint runs. Man, I uh, maybe should have looked closer at this thing before I bought it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it is what it is. It just gets beat up. All right, let me move the camera. All right, then there are body panels in the wheel well. I think there's three of them that need to be pulled. All right, so you get your little friendly body clip puller tool here. And uh, there's one right here. There's one, actually there's two right here. There's one way up in the back. So let's get the back one first. Let me see if I can get a shot. I don't know if, how well you're gonna be able to see that. Might be a little dark for you, but it's right here. Get in there with your, your clip puller there. And you just pry that body clip right out. All right, the other two are right here. Oop, try not to hit the camera. Sorry, I don't mean to jar you around. But yeah, you can just pry these out of here. There we go. Now this thing should maybe pull out of here. Um, oh, wait, I think I got all the... I'm not sure if I left any of the underneath bolts in. I gotta look and see if I left any of the underneath ones here. No, I don't think so. So this should just be able to drop down and then slide backwards from under the bumper. Maybe. Oh, missed a clip. Apparently there's four, not three. I'm gonna have to go check the check the passenger side. Yeah, I missed that one. There we go. Now should be able to. There we go. Out she comes. And come over here. I think I probably missed one over here on the old passenger side. Ugh. Yep, there it is. There it is. Fourth clips out. And the radiator, I guess like the radiator splash guard or skid pad or whatever. You can see this one is it's pretty beat up. That's all torn up there. That mounting spot's all torn up there. So 
definitely need to be replaced. Had to take a little break, had to go pick the kid up from school, and we stopped to get smoothies. So now I got the, so I got the splash guards onto the charger, that's done. I got the doors adjusted to the D100. Uh, next thing I wanna do is address some issues, leaks, minor things. So the transmission on the D100. The 46RH, the overdrive section where it bolts to the back of the housing, which is basically a 727, the three bottom bolts are wet. They're in, they're exposed to transmission fluid on the back side. It's not an enclosed thread. So maybe I didn't add enough thread sealant to those bolts because they kind of seep. They don't even, dro drops don't even hit the ground. It just, they're just damp. So I think I'm gonna pull those, thread seal them, put them back in. Also, the output shaft occasionally leaks. Output shaft seal, that occasionally leaks. I'm gonna replace that. The one thing I really wanna look at are the spark plugs. Um, so even though I'm running the Holley Sniper EFI, this thing still runs pretty rich. I wanna look at the, the spark plug gap. So right now, according to the manual, I gapped all my spark plugs to 35 thou which to, according to the manual for a carbureted engine is fine. But I'm running basically an HEI, hot or spark. So that should, I believe, have a wider gap. Let me know your thoughts down below. Should I leave the gap the same or should I, I'm pretty sure I should increase that gap. Let's have a discussion down below. So I'm gonna pull the plugs, I'm gonna look at them and I'm thinking I'm gonna gap them to go to 045. Start there and we'll see how it runs, see how it does. Maybe I might have to back it back down a little bit, but I'm going to gap them all to 045. But yeah, I want to take a look at those plugs first. All right, so here are the three lower bolts out of my overdrive section of my transmission, holding the overdrive to the main case. And you can see this thread sealant is just deteriorating. So I don't know what I used on that. <laughs> I'll have to go back and look at that other video and see exactly what thread sealant I used, but I don't think I ran it I don't think I put it down on the actual threads. I mean, there's nothing down here. So this part here is in the hole of the overdrive section and there's, but there's nothing that's not threaded. So there's nothing for that to really seal to. That's probably why it was, why it was leaking, seeping, whatever. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean these up and then just put some thread sealant down here on the end of the bolt that way, as soon as it engages the threads inside the, the housing of the transmission, that'll seal up, it should be fine. So there's that. Um, I pulled the number one spark plug. So here's the number one plug. Doesn't look too bad, it's a little rich. I think it's a little dark, um, but the timing mark on it, I'll try to zoom in on it. Maybe you'll be able to see it, hopefully. But the timing mark is just before the curve of the the plug there so the timing looks really good um could be adjusted maybe a little bit but again these are gapped to 035 so i'm going to run these out to like 045 i'm going to run that and see what that does so i'm going to do that to all the other plugs build the project car build the hot rod it'll be fun yeah they don't tell you that all the work that goes into these things. You'd end up going, you know, three steps forward, two steps back sometimes it feels like, but whatever. It is what it is. I do actually enjoy the, the process more than the actual driving this thing sometimes. Um, but, you know, like I said, it is what it is. I think I need a different extension for that. Ugh. Good times. Well, that was interesting. The majority of those plugs were really still wet. A lot of unburned fuel in those cylinders. I would say probably five or six of them were wet. A um, couple of them, I think it was like three, number three, was really dark, uh, really carboned up. So I cleaned that up a little bit. Um, all the ones, the timing marks look pretty decent on all of them. All the ones I can make out probably five or six of them maybe. A couple of them are just way too wet to even see the timing mark for some reason. 
Um, so hopefully opening that gap up will help maybe get a little bit hotter spark and burn some of that, some of that excess fuel that's in, the, that's in those cylinders. Um, so now I just gotta do some, a bunch of wiring cleanup in here from the last time that I was doing some leak fixing uh, on the top of the engine. So while well, the wires are still clipped free, I gotta go through and secure all those up. I'm not gonna bore you with that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think once that's done, I'll be able to take the truck out and hopefully um, you know, run around the block, maybe up and down the freeway a little bit and see how she does. I'll get some video clips of that, hopefully. I should. So let me finish that up and then I should see you guys again. We'll be on the road, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. Cool. guys for you get this thing out take it for a little test drive see how she does and uh yeah just enjoy the nice morning right now um it's been a few days since i worked on the the video so a bunch of other things going on but you know such is life but i'm gonna take this opportunity to get this thing out and just see how she uh how she performs Drives really nice. Um, oh, I need gas. Um, but yeah, it's still on. It's hard to say if it's still running rich. I mean, on startup, it's going to a bit. Um, I'm gonna drive it around a bit and uh, pull the plugs once I get home and see see what it looks like once it cools off, obviously. But uh, yeah, I just wanna put a little bit of time on it and see. Uh, see how she does I really enjoy driving this thing um, granted it is oh nice little MG look at this you won't be able to see it you might be able to see it in this camera here that was a nice little car um, I really do enjoy driving this thing even though it has been a pretty big headache uh, dealing with all the little all the little things that go along with you know building a building a hot rod um, yeah, I really would do want to use it more now that hopefully, you know, we're into September now and hopefully things will start to cool off a little bit and I'll be able to, to use this thing a little bit more without having to worry about, you know, dying of heat stroke, which is kind of what I've been calling this thing, my project heat stroke. Um, you know, camera's tilted, whoa, about to lose my camera, hang on. Gotta fix the fix the camera mount. I'm losing my I'm losing my camera. All right, so that might not be the best mount for this camera. It was worth a try. Um, almost lost the camera. All right, so like I said, I've kind of been calling this thing Project Heat Stroke. You know, like I said, I live in Vegas. It's a little warm here. And there have been times where I've been working on this thing and I feel like I'm gonna die just because heat. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about calling this thing. Project Heat Stroked. Um, I live in Vegas, so it gets really hot here and it's a stroked 417. So, heat stroked. Makes sense, right? What do you guys think? I know, kind of dumb to kind of name some of these projects, especially, you know, on such a small channel. But you know, it is what it is. I think she needs a name. She's Project Heat Stroke. But yeah, I'm just gonna put a little bit of time on this thing. I'm gonna flip it around a little bit and let's see uh, how she does.
well, pulled in the driveway, decided to pop the hood and have a look at things. And yeah, that's uh, that'd be another oil leak. But hey, at least the doors work better.